Remote laboratories are a great chance for teachers in technical topics. Um, so they offer an opportunity for students to have 24-7 access to equipment that is located in the laboratory of the university or at school or in another place. This is not a new idea, it's 20 years old of course, but our intention is to have a very flexible and adaptable setup. You can configure courses with the same technical equipment for school systems with different demands, as well as for universities where you have more specific tasks, less support students should discover the specific questions. And the implementation shows now configuration uh, where we have the implementation part right in the same so we have to offer the existing yeah, that's a camera yeah, and we have a detailed explanation and you are able to configure the whole system by just loading additional modules by configuring them and this can be merged together in an open educational resource repository. So the idea is that remote laboratories become part of the educational community. So we would like to change um, the content, discuss about and adapt it. It's not necessary anymore that teachers from different particular countries implement the same setup. And at the end, we have an opportunity for students to access the installation. Lear script, right? Lear script is in the background. Lear script is used to describe the content, of course. Ah, Lear script okay. is one piece of this data solution, but it is extended by the opportunity to integrate um, additional hardware devices and specific modules for intervention for students to each other, um, blackboards for discussing and uh, cooperatively used code editors or different um, movie streams that can be used to evaluate the Stream. outcome uh, of the system. Did this this video see? Move here, the student at the end realizes, okay, the, um, su the support was, su was successful, the implementation was successful, or probably it generates some problems. If we make an erroneous code, of course we can delete something here, run the code, run the code. Information from our um, compiler, of course, and the compiler runs on our uh, teacher's computer. So the whole configuration is on the teacher's side. But now it comes a technical interesting feature there's no server in between. So it's not necessary that you would call the IT department, ask for some session, etc. etc. No, everything is executed on the teacher's computer. And we use a WebRTC connection to bring both together. And this becomes visible if we reload the course. Then our tablet looks for an installation that belongs to this very long URL that was generated by the teacher's point from the configuration. And afterwards, we can enter different types of rooms, different workstations that give us an access to the actual. So, so apparently, you can use this when you're having like boot camp. First one, the, the boot camp so high school. Like yes, you set it up. Yeah, yeah, that would be a very good app. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's an interesting aspect. Sometimes teachers ask us, "Hey, we do not want to use um, um, text-based programming for our high school or smaller kid children. We need a graphical interface." In this case, you just replace the module that addresses the editor <coughs> by a text, uh, a graphical programming interface, you change the structure of the tasks, the explanations, and can reuse the same course for a new group of learners. Ah, this is 